this webinar series where we discuss development issues based on data and evidence. In today's webinar, we will discuss a PADS study which look into an incentive scheme instituted by government to um, enhance the productivity and efficiency of the public sector workforce. We will revisit its design and how it was implemented, and we will also see the bottlenecks and challenges faced by the participating government entities to um, qualify for the scheme, as well as the unintended consequences that emerged along the way. To formally open our event, I call on the president of PIDS, Dr. Celia Reyes. Mamsel? Uh, we have um, National Anti Poverty Commission Secretary and Lead Convener Noel Filonco, NEDA Assistant Secretary for Planning and Policy Group Carlos Bernardo Abad Santos, DLG Assistant Secretary for Administration, Finance, and Comptrollership Esther Aldana, and from BIR, we have Deputy Commissioner for Resource Management Group Celia King. Assistant Commissioner for Human Resource Development Service, Margaret Mary Loron, and Assistant Commissioner for Planning and Management Service, Marietta Lorenzo. From Field Guarantee, we have Senior Vice President Ian Briones and Vice President Nelia Wandasan. And from DAP, we have Senior Vice President Magdalena Mendoza. We also have today a PNVSCA Executive Director Donald James Gawe, PPP Center Deputy Executive Director Eliazar Ricote. And we're also joined this afternoon by um, directors and regional directors and assistant regional directors from NEDA and also other government agencies. And uh, from pra Santa, Praxide Santa Praxides Cagayan, we have Councillor Christopher Aguirre representing the local government units. And from media, we have DWBL 91.9 Bright FM Station Administrator, Reverend Father Joseph Mary Bacay of the Archdiocese of San Fernando, Pampanga. And from the academe, we have Kalayaan College President Maria Oliva Domingo, Visayas State University Vice President for Planning, Dilberto Ferrari, University of Southeastern Philippines Vice President Tamara Sher Mercado, Southern Luzon State University Vice President for Administrative and Financial Affairs, Frederick Villa, Siliman University Vice President for Finance and Administration, Jenny Chu, Polytechnic University with the Philippines Executive Vice President Alberto Guillo, UP Visayas Vice Chancellor for Research and Extension Rolly Fuentes, and Mindanao from Mindanao State University Assistant Vice Chancellor for Academic Affairs Sejara Rande Caris, and uh, we also have UP Mindanao Vice Chancellor for Administration Karen Joyce Kayamanda, and um, we also have directors and deans from the different state universities and colleges. And for this afternoon, we have Consul Robert Quintin of the Consulate General of the Philippines in Hong Kong, and First Secretary and Consul Christina Gracia Rolla McKernan of the Philippine Embassy in Paris. And um, from the CSO group, we have Masaganang Sakahan Director Daniel Agustin. Let me also greet our colleagues from the government, academe, civil society, and the private sector, and to those who are watching us through the PIDS Facebook page. A pleasant afternoon and welcome to our weekly public webinar. In 2012, the government adopted the performance-based incentive system for employees in the executive branch as a means to motivate higher performance and ensure that commitments and targets are accomplished. The PBIS is composed of the Productivity Enhance Enhancement Incentive, or PEI, and the Performance-Based Bonus Scheme, or PBB. The PEI is an across-the-board bonus given to all government employees, while the PBB is a top-up bonus for groups and individuals who have contributed the most to the accomplishment of the department, agency, or government-wide performance. The implementation of the PBIS is being administered by the AO25 Interagency Task Force, chaired by the Department of Budget and Management and co-chaired by the Office of the Cabinet Secretary. Members of the task force include the Office of the Executive Secretary, National Economic and Development Authority, the Presidential Management Staff, and the Department of Finance. It also has a technical working group composed of various government agencies and the Development Academy of the Philippines as its technical secretariat and resource institution. 
Two years after its implementation in 2012, the World Bank assessed the PBB as part of a broader context of human resource issues. Based on a perception survey of 4,500 officials, the study found a positive impact of PBB on government performance. Apart from the World Bank study, there has been no comprehensive study on the PBB's effectiveness since its adoption in 2012, particularly its impact on the public sector employees' motivation and productivity. The DBM thought it's important to evaluate the impact of PBB, and the study to be presented this afternoon is in response to that. Later, we will hear our very own senior research fellow, Dr. Jose Ramon Albert, present the findings of the process evaluation of the PBB, which is needed before an impact evaluation is performed. This study examined the design of the PBB, how it was ex executed, as well as identified implementation deficits and challenges encountered by employees and government agencies and units in meeting the conditions to qualify for the PBB. We will also learn about the effects of PBB in three levels, namely agency-wide incentive effects, team-level collaboration effects, and individual staff member incentive effects. This afternoon, we're also joined by representatives from the government and academe who will share their insights on the study's findings and recommendations, as well as their thoughts on the effectiveness and areas for improvement of the PBB as a tool to enhance the productivity and performance of the public sector workforce. I'd like to thank Assistant Secretary Greg Pineda of NEDA and Dean Ronnelly Asuncion of the University of the Philippines School of Labor and Industrial Relations for joining us this afternoon. We're also grateful for the presence of Ms. Imelda Caluen, Vice President and Managing Director of the Development Academy of the Philippines Center for Governance, who will formally close our event this afternoon. As I've mentioned earlier, the DAP serves as Technical Secretariat of the AO25 Interagency Task Force for the implementation of the results-based performance management system for the executive branch. I look forward to hearing everyone's insights during the open forum. Thank you and have a good day. Have a good day too, Mamsel, and thank you for um, opening our event. So friends, uh, before we proceed to the presentation of Dr. Albert, may I remind you about our house rules. So for all attendees, your microphone is muted upon entry, and uh, this is to prevent any background noise, but this doesn't mean that uh, you cannot join the, the open forum. So to, um, uh, if you have any question, just use the chat box, which is located at the lower part of your screen. Uh, that is if you're in, on WebEx, and uh, just type your name, your uh, affiliation, and your question, and please make it concise because we have limited time. And then send your question to all panelists or to everyone, not to a particular person. And I will read your questions during the open forum. For those who are um, uh, watching us on Facebook, you are also very much welcome, welcome to participate in our um, discussion. So all you need to do is to uh, type your question using the comment section of Facebook. Okay. Now, um, let us proceed to the presentation which will be given by uh, Dr. Jose Ramon Albert, a senior research fellow at the PIDS and also the leader of the research project which we'll, we will be discussing today. Dr. Albert was the Secretary General of the defunct National Statistical Coordination Board, which was consolidated with other statistics offices into the Philippine Statistics Authority or the PSA. He is, he is also a member of various bodies and expert groups on statistics and related matters, including the United Nations Global Pulse Data Privacy Advisory Group and the Philippine Commission on Higher Education's Technical Committee on Statistics. He was also part of the Secretariat of an Expert Committee on Statistics that uh, evaluated the Philippine statistical system in 2007. Dr. Albert has a bachelor's degree in applied math, summa cum laude, from the De La Salle University, and he has a master's degree and a PhD in statistics from the State University of New York at Stony Brook. His main research interests are education, social protection, poverty, big data, data mining, and ICT. Friends, Dr. Jose Ramon Albert. Uh, good afternoon and thanks, Sheila. Um, as uh, was indicated by Sheila, this study actually was is a process evaluation that uh, 
uh, uh, this study on a process evaluation of the performance based bonus or PBB. It's not the Pinoy Big Brother, no? <laughs> uh, this will be, this, has, uh, this is joint work with Dr. Ron Mendoza of the Ateneo School of Government, um, uh, who has been co principal investigator, uh, Professor Jen Monje of the Pamantasa ng Lunsod ng Maynila, who conducted uh, work with respondents from DepEd, Dr. Gina Opiniano of the University of Santo Tomas who interviewed and examined uh, respondents' uh, uh, information um, uh, from national government agencies, GOCCs, and constitutional commissions. Uh, Mr. Michael Pastor of the De La Salle College of St. Benilde, who worked on respondents uh, from CHED and SUCS, and our colleagues at uh, PIDS, Dr. Janet Cuenca, and uh, Ms. Jana Vismanos, and Ms. Mika Munoz. The talk is structured as follows. After I, uh, a description of uh, the study objectives, uh, I will be providing some background literature on the uh, PBB uh, and our evaluation. Uh, I, I will describe our study approach in this process evaluation. And following this, I discuss the study uh, uh, some the results and the study the study findings and close with uh, with a few recommendations that could help sharpen the PBB implementation moving forward. In 2012, the government, uh, as pointed out, Dr. Reyes adopted a performance based incentive system, the PBIS, for employees in the executive branch of government to reward exemplary performance, align individual, personal, and departmental efforts with organizational targets and improve service delivery. And again, as was mentioned by Dr. Reyes, the PBIS is actually composed of two incentives. First, a productivity enhancement incentive, which is across the board. Um, and second, a uh, performance-based bonus, which is a top-up bonus. And the provision of this second is associated with organization-wide compliance of several requirements. For instance, citizen's charter, transparency seal, ISO certification. Compliance with these requirements has de facto become part of the rollout objectives of the PBB, although when the PBB was first implemented, it was meant and probably still is meant to deliver big productivity improvements in the government bureaucracy in a cost-effective manner. The entire PBIS should be seen in the context of the results-based performance management system, which cuts across the executive branch of government. Prior to the establishment of the RBPMS, each government agency had its own system to manage performance of the institution and staff. And this performance managements are tended to be disconnected with others. Uh, when it was established, the RBPMS was meant to heighten accountability with a set of comprehensive performance indicators across government institutions, uh, linking organizational and individual performance to five key result areas of the government social contract the results matrix of the Philippine Development Plan, and the organizational performance indicators framework that the DBM has adopted for the entire government. Since 2012, the DBM has annually released guidelines on the grant of the PBB. In general, all government agencies are required to meet good governance conditions and performance targets and commitments to qualify for the PBB. And again, as was mentioned by Dr. Reyes, aside from a study conducted by the World Bank in 2014, a comprehensive study on the impact of the PBB on government employees, motivation, and productivity has so far not been undertaken since the adoption of the PBB in 2012. Two years ago, the DBM requested PIDS to conduct an impact evaluation of the PBB as part of our in-house studies. Uh, I think you can go to the next slide, please. And the PIDS accommodated this request and proceeded with um, a uh, um, composing our study team. 
at PIBS whenever we conduct um, at, uh, evaluation studies, this involves two phases. Uh, can you go back one slide? Uh, this usually involves two phases, a process evaluation and an impact evaluation. And as was suggested earlier, I'll be discussing with you results of phase one. In other words, our assessment of the implementation of the PBB. Phase two on the impact evaluation is still actually under ongoing. And we, in we intend to present preliminary results uh, by next month, but only internally at PIDS with our study's main stakeholders, the AO25 IATF headed by DBM and the IATF Technical Secretariat, the DAP. For the process evaluation phase that was finished last year, we had a number of specific policy questions of interest. Chiefly, how has the PBB been implemented in relation to its design? What challenges have been faced by government agencies in meeting the conditions to qualify for PBB? And what are the challenges by, uh, faced by the AO25 IATF and the Secretariat in managing the PBB? As I indicated earlier, the PBB is an incentive meant to improve the performance and productivity of government workers and in turn, services and productivity of their respective organizations. It's premised on both the theories of motivation and known conventional wisdom. For instance, according to Maslow's theory of hierarchical needs, incentives motivate employees. Further, conventional wisdom asserts that high-performing employees should be better rewarded than satisfactory or low-level performing employees. Performance improvement through use of rewards has long been practiced, particularly in the private sector, and such practice is anchored on a rarely examined belief that people will do a better job if they are given incentives. Two broad strands of literature on performance-based incentives in the public sector focus on developing measures of performance in the public sector and examinations of the linkage between these measures and the performance-based incentives geared to better achieve them. As regards the first set, some studies have pointed out that public sector performance is much more difficult to measure than private sector performance given the varied nature of public sector output, for instance, national defense, quality and inclusive education, and the rule of law. A recent synthesis of international experience in applying public sector incentives in developing countries suggests that well-designed financial rewards can trigger improved public sector outcomes, particularly if this is easy to measure. But where public sector outcomes are broad and difficult to measure, performance-based incentives could be ineffective or even backfire. Among the second strand of literature we examined were studies that used impact evaluation methods, for instance, in health. One study found evidence that incentives primarily accelerated the accomplishment of target objectives, but the effect eventually dissipated over time. Another study examined the effects of financial incentive, the ability of tax inspectors to choose where they would be posted on tax collections. And this study found evidence that the assessment system increased annual tax revenue by as much as 20, 30 to 41 percent, even if rewards were not financial. Other literature we examined simply featured before and after analysis, which don't tend to correct for possible influence of other factors affecting target results. These studies, however, revealed insights on potential drivers and the organizational context of higher performance. As regards the PBB, as was mentioned also by Dr. Reyes, the World Bank conducted a study and uh, making use of a perception survey of 4,500 officials, they found a positive impact on government performance. Support for the PBB was found to be very strong across all departments, bureaus, and performance ratings. Reports were also made about improvements in management practices, greater teamwork, better target setting and monitoring, and fostering trust within units. But one area of concern was the perceived 
lack of transparency of the individual rating process. The study recommended restructuring the PBB to give greater weight to group-based bonus against individual bonus. Second, gradually relax good governance conditions. And third, strengthen the review and independent validation by DBM and the IATF Secretariat. All of these recommendations have been subsequently adopted by government. On the other hand, our process evaluation of the PBB involved the use of desk reviews of available documents and related literature, as well as an examination of data on the PBB made available to us by the AO25 Secretariat. Further, aside from conducting secondary data analysis, we also collected and analyzed new primary data through key informant interviews and focus group discussions. We interviewed more than 300 respondents from the government sector across four study areas, Metro Manila, Balance, Luzon, Visayas, and Mindanao. The first, they actually represented three clusters. The first cluster comprised 70 government employees from non-government, uh, national government agencies, GOCCs, and constitutional commissions. The second cluster consisted of more than 100 CHED staff as well as faculty and non-teaching staff from SOOCs. And the remaining study respondents were co composed of nearly 130 DEPED staff and public school teachers. Now to proceed to, some, to our major findings of the design and implementation of the PBB. As per design, the PBB is meant to recognize and reward exemplary performance, aside from rationalizing the distribution of incentives, nurturing team spirit, and strengthening performance monitoring and appraisal systems. The AO Secretariat provided us this excellent infographic depicting how every year the PBB gets released by government. Information is first cascaded regarding the eligibility requirements, timelines, and the process of the grant of the PBB, starting from the issuance of guidelines by the DBM, there are orientation activities conducted for focal points with the information received by focals that are meant to be cascaded to all staff in the respective agencies. The agencies then prepare reports and supporting evidence with the aim of getting the PBB. And if they comply with all the requirements within the set deadline, the agency reports are then validated by the IATF, which monitors and subsequently issues an eligibility report, ranks the agencies, and then prepares the requisite budget and finally releases the PBB to the qualified agencies and personnel. As per our interviews across all the three clusters of respondents, the PBB guidelines and information about the PBB requirements reporting deadlines are supposed to be cascaded to everyone. But respondents pointed out that there are not enough mechanisms to ensure that this is happening effectively. The AO Secretariat and the study respondents pointed out that the eligibility requirements have been pabago-bago across the years, PBB. The PBB was clearly used as a carrot to push for the adoption of a number of efficiency and productivity enhancing standards and reforms. It was noted also that how agencies were being rated and ranked also was pabago-bago. It, was, it kept changing across the years. At the onset, during 2014-2015, requirements were less stringent compared to more years when even the PBB is now requiring everyone to have ISO certified quality management systems in place. In fairness, though, this ISO certification was to, supposed to have been a directive during the time of President Gloria Macapagal Arroyo, but few institutions actually carried this out. And so the PBB was used as the carrot. The amount of PBB incentives received by employees have also been pabago-bago. They have varied from a fixed nominal amount in 2012 to 2015 to a percentage of the salary of the employees in more recent years with an employee receiving either 65%, 57.5%, may butal pa, no? and 50% of his or her salary depending on the ranking of his or her delivery unit. Eligibility rates for na national government agencies across time 
confirm that in the initial years, it was easier to get the PBB. But in recent years, the PBB eligibility was tightened. The same goes for SOOKs, where we even see a, a much more clearly a decreasing trend in the eligibility rates since 2015. In 2017, there was even an enormous drop in both the number of eligible SOOKs and the eligibility rates. I actually immediately thought that was probably you know, on account of the ISO certification. Data from the AO25 Secretariat confirmed my suspicions that the requirement for ISO certification has been a contributing factor as to why agencies and SOOKs were ineligible to receive the grant in 2016 and 2017. In the period 2012 to 2018, appropriations for the PBB averaged 13 billion per year for a total of 92.2 billion. From 2012 to 2015, about 82% of these appropriations were released. In 2016, less than half of the appropriations were released due to a delay in submission of requirements from a major department with a huge bureaucracy. But this was subsequently released in succeeding years. And now to summarize results of interviews gathered. Many of those we interviewed from NGAs, GOCCs, and constitutional commissions acknowledged that the AO25 IATF provided their agencies with information on the PBB operational procedures, which usually got disseminated in general assemblies by focals. The operational procedures were generally described as well-established and compliance was reported to be high, but there were reports that some of these guidelines were vague and some of the forms are quite difficult to fill out. Also, while the PBB was meant to foster a culture of excellence, there were reports of unintended consequences, including jealousy over incentives received by others, a perception of arbitrariness in ratings, and a tendency to increase over time just to fulfill the many documentation requirements for the PBB. Instead of putting efforts on, the performing, on performing their main tasks, employees and agencies tend to focus on the needed PBB documentations. All respondents also shared that there had been increasing number of requirements through the years, and some respondents described the increase of these requirements as being more stringent, hence making it more difficult for agencies to become eligible for the PBB. On a more positive perspective, one respondent described the increase in requirements as improvements of the process and or requirements. A number of agencies had mentioned that the QMS ISO requirement as a reason for their ineligibility. Some respondents also reported having made schemes of sharing the incentives just to pacify employees who are not among the better or best departments. A majority of the respondents noted that the PBB has met its overall objectives, providing a strong motivation to comply, but they hope that the implementation processes can still be improved. In SOOCs, respondents noted that there are several factors at implementing the implementation of the PBB, such as the high volume of documentary requirements and the underutilization of IT systems for PBB concerns. Over the years, SOOCs have also noticed that the many quality assurance mechanisms that the government requires have varying reporting formats, making documentary compliance very challenging and burdensome. Furthermore, respondents also reported that the PBB guidelines don't respond to SOOCs operational context. For instance, some normal colleges have to outsource experts in planning, unlike technological SOOCs who have an available pool of expert engineers. For SOOCs with multiple campuses, monitoring and evaluation of whether everyone can provide reports on time is also more difficult. Also, since focals normally change annually, this results in problems to communicate the PBB guidelines effectively in SOOCs. 
Aside from the PBB, there are also incentives available for faculty, especially in the conduct of research. Some had pointed out that ironically, they would be getting individual re re rewards in research and teaching, and yet they would not qualify for any PBB simply because they are part of a SOOC that did not qualify for the bonus. For the DepEd cluster, teachers and school heads and principals all agree that the objectives of the PBB are being met. But it has been noticed that the PBB is often viewed as compensation for having done more work rather than for having done work better. During the interviews, respond, uh, respondents asserted that school key performance indicators such as NAT scores and dropout rates are being misreported and or manipulated just to meet the PBB. Several report that the PBB is being gamed by freeloaders, by some principals who take the path of least resistance, telling re teachers that satisfactory ratings is enough to receive the PBB. And because parameters for small and big schools are the same, so small schools have better chances of getting higher ranking or PBB payouts. Some teachers also report that they don't understand how schools are ranked or how they could improve their ranking, and thus the PBB can foster in Gitan. Some teachers even assert that their principals don't understand the PBB and hence they fail to cascade information to subordinates. Teaching personnel are reportedly being tasked to perform liquidation tasks and other clerical tasks pertaining to PBB, which sometimes compels them to abandon their teaching responsibilities. Some complain of the arbitrary date of release of PBB payouts and even coined the term paasa buwan buwan. Recently, we re-examined our FGDs in the DepEd cluster using the NVivo software for qualitative data analysis. And we have come up with a visualization of top of mind words that come to mind when respondents hear the term PBB. On the left, we see very clearly that the PBB tends to be viewed largely in terms of the reward, money, and bonus. And there is frequently a positive view of the PBB. We also tabulated some recurring concepts mentioned during the interviews regardless of whether the interviews come from schools, division, regional, and central offices, there is a general positive view of the PBB that there is recognition it's meant to motivate, improve performance, and it helps in meeting targets. But there is also recognition that it gets overly tied to targets for learning achievement in the NAT and zero dropouts. And there is concern that sometimes there can be unintended consequences, not only of making poorly performing students absent during the NAT just to get better NAT scores, but also mass promotion to achieve zero dropouts and thus become eligible for the PBB. In conclusion, compliance to PBB requirements varies among the different agencies and offices with different coping strategies to qualify for the PBB and some resulting even with two uh, potentially perverse outcomes. Massaging of data was reported as part of attempts to comply with the requirements. We also see that there's tension between quantitative and qualitative targets and goals. For instance, the dropout rate indicator. Um, some education staff would either resort to mass promotion or to identify students as repeaters rather than tarnish their dropout indicators for the school because this would affect the PBB. There is a wide array of views on whether and to what extent PBB actually improves services based on the views of respondents. Many held that the PBB works by incentivizing more work output, though not necessarily better quality services. While some noted that with or without PBB, government workers will still accomplish their tasks and targets. Strength and teamwork were observed among some agencies. Employees become more aware of their responsibilities and deadlines, having accountability for each other. There used to be a there could be a practice of sharing of uh, monetary incentives among those qualified for the PIB grant uh, with those who did not, which is considered prohibited according to the guidelines of the PBB. In some units, unfair ratings are have been creating discord. Respondents from SOOCs raised issues on the indicators and targets themselves, 
as well as the prospects for their attainment. This is true in the case where units over overperform because this provides difficulty the following year since the institution must not deliver a performance below its previous target. As for the non -go uh, national government agencies, respondents shared that the PBB was babago-bago, that there had been increasing number of PBB requirements to the years, and a few respondents described the increasing requirements as more stringent, hence making it more difficult to become eligible for the incentive. Unintended consequences of the PBB, according to some respondents, include jealousy among employees, perceptions of arbitrary ratings, a tendency to increase over, over, over time just to fulfill the PBB documentary requirements, unnecessary competition. To end this presentation, given the mixed compliance, mixed perceptions, unintended side effects, confusing requirements, there is a need to revisit policy objectives at the macro level or agency level, at the meso level or team level, and at the micro level for staff member level. PBB instrument uh, generates at least three channels of impact, agency-wide incentive effects, team level co collaboration effects, and individual staff member incentive effects. Agency-wide incentive effects have different impacts across agencies with already well-performing agencies able to respond better and less effective agencies potentially facing greater difficulties in re re responding to even new requirements. It is critical that the PBB be understood within a broader reform context the, um, across agencies Staff in agencies that are overwhelmed with requirements may actually be discouraged rather than incentivized. So it is critical that reform roadmaps in each agency be made at sync with the use of the PBB. Team level collaboration effects vary as some teams cohere better in order to achieve team-based targets, while other teams collude in gaming the PBB. Staff member level effects also vary depending on perceptions, information about reform, capabilities, and other factors. Pending the salary increases in some agencies may blunt the potential impact uh, of the uh, PBB. The combined effect of salary increases and the PBB must be carefully monitored and assessed in order to ensure that, the, that all of the increased compensation is tied to better services. Inter international evidence suggests that financial incentives are not the only tools for incentivizing better public sector services. In agencies where salaries are already high, in DOH, for instance, nurses' salaries are expected to be higher than the private sector. So in this case, PBB should be recalibrated to include non-financial incentives in the future. We note here that the PBB can be continued, and in fact, many respondents would like this to be continued, but there is a need, a clear need for some improvements in the policy design. Some, uh, here are some policy questions that the IATF may want to consider as it rethinks and revises the policy design. First, should PBB be juxtaposed against a broader state capacity building agenda? Should government focus only on using the PBB for agency level objectives? Should government consider supporting weaker agencies in order to avoid inequality in compliance capabilities and outcomes? Otherwise, some agencies may be further left behind in productivity. Is PBB still effective given SSL and other public sector income enhancing reforms? To address mixed perceptions, could information on the policy be more effectively cascaded from central agencies to agencies? To address fairness issues, could metrics for performance be tweaked to consider more difficult frontline agencies work? To help enhance agency level compliance, should guidelines and documentary burdens be further streamlined as part of government's efforts to lessen red tape? And, for, and finally, to help uh, motivate collaboration, enhance teamwork, as well as encourage individual level of motivation, uh, should agencies be given more flexibilities to use non-financial incentives to complement the PBB. That ends my presentation. Maraming salamat po. And maraming salamat din sa YouTube and to your um, um, 
authors for your for your concise yet comprehensive presentation. So friends, before we proceed to the next part of our webinar, uh, let me give our discussions a chance to uh, to prepare. So let's have a short break by having a poll. So if you are listening intently to the presentation of Dr. Albert, he uh, mentioned several uh, policy questions. And one of them is if the government should consider uh, supporting weaker agencies to increase their capacity to meet the PBB requirements. Actually, uh, when I heard this, um, what came to my mind is that uh, it is this is akin to one of the measures being undertaken by the government in the implementation of the Seal of Local Good Governance or the SGLG award, which is an incentive uh, scheme uh, being administered by the DILG for our local government units or uh, LGUs. And actually, we had a webinar on this uh, two months ago. The SGL, SGLG law uh, prescribes uh, capacity building for LGUs that are having difficulty qualifying for the SGLG, SGLG award. And now Dr. Albert mentioned something similar in his presentation. And we would like to get your pulse on that policy question posed by the project team. So I invite you to share us, with us your thoughts by answering our um, Paul, uh, question, should the government consider supporting weaker agencies to increase their PBB compliance capacity? Yes or no? Okay, so uh, um, feel free to um, give your um, answer to this question. If there is no right or wrong answer, but as a token of our appreciation to those who will be joining our poll, we will pick two names and they will win um, the uh, PIDS notebook, this one, and uh, five guaranteed slots to our next webinar, which will be held on November 12. Uh, I will announce the poll results before the open forum, so make sure that you have entered your question, your answer before that, and I will announce the winners before we close the webinar, okay? So our discussions are ready. Friends, uh, as mentioned by Dr. Reyes in, his, in her opening remarks, we invited two panelists to give their comments and insights on the studies, findings and recommendations, as well as uh, their thoughts on the effectiveness and areas for improvement of the PBB. Our first discussant is the Dean of the School of Labor and Inter Industrial Relations of the Univers University of the Philippines, or UP Soler. Uh, she's more popularly known as George. Uh, perhaps she may uh, she could tell us why. Um, she is the eighth dean and the third woman to have the school, and her expertise includes organizational studies, organizational communication, public policy, occupational safety and health, human resource uh, management, and organizational behavior. Before she was appointed. Dean of Soler, she held various positions at the University of the Philippines. She obtained her PhD in communication, Master of Public Administration and Bachelor of Arts in Communication from UP Diliman. She also has a master's degree in uh, Occupational Safety and Health from the University of Turin. And currently she is finishing her Master of Education major in guidance also in UP Diliman. Friends, Dr. Ronali Asuncion. Can, can you hear me? Yes, ma'am. Can you hear me? Okay, kasi yes, nagkaroon kami ng problema kanina sa audio. Okay. Okay, uh, magandang hapon po sa ating lahat. Uh, we're going to discuss a very, very important um, HR, human resource uh, concern. No, This is the uh, bonus. No? Lahat naman tayo ay... Uh, uh, kumbaga, uh, stakeholder dito sa PBB uh, para sa ating mga government employees. Okay. So back in 2012, when I heard about uh, the PBB, sabi ko, ano ba yung objectives ng PBB na yan? No? Uh, what is the program trying to address? Ito yung mga tanong po na pumasok sa isip ko. What lessons have been learned from the previous performance instrument? Kasi alam naman natin na uh, ang performance evaluation in government, this is some, this is not something new, di ba? Matagal na ito na meron tayong uh, performance evaluation. And how can this uh, program, no, yung bagong program na ito ng government, how can it help improve performance of uh, government employees as well as its institutions? Okay. 
So, fast forward today, okay, ano yung mga gains na meron tayo sa PBB na ito? No? Um, it has installed awareness of performance delivery in the unit. No? Sorry. Okay. It has also heightened the awareness as well as the recognition in the unit that performance is a team effort. Okay. Uh, of course, the recognition of the culture of quality performance. And in the case of the University of the Philippines, um, mag-share lang po ako, uh, the faculty and staff were able to contribute inputs on performance. And top performers among faculty and staff became role models for the rest. No? So, alam namin na, ah, para maging best ka, uh, dapat ganito tayo. No? Nagkaroon ng ganun na, na awareness. Okay. So, those are the gains. No? Yun ang positive. Meron din naman, siyempre, negative. No? So, ano naman yung ano? Ah, I have to tell you. Ang hirap yung mga forms. Ang hirap i-fill up. Alam niyo bang it takes us months para matapos namin yung mga forms na ito? At uh, pabalik-balik po yan sa office po yan. No? Uh, meron kaming, um, in, in my school, School of Labor, meron po kaming PBB, focal person. At uh, so pabalik-balik, inaabot kami ng gabi para lang mahabol yung deadline and all. No? Um, nagkakaroon din ng mga unrealistic expectations or target, kaya yung iba ang sabi nag under target. Um, I just want to share, in, in our case, um, meron silang ano na, for example, ang graduates mo last uh, year ay sabihin natin 100 graduates. Yung graduates mo for the following year should not be lower than 100. Na hindi mo naman yan ma, uh, ano, ma, makocontrol. Ano, papagraduate na lang namin sila lahat para lang mamit namin yung PBB. At the same time, pati din po yung mga admission. Like, how many freshmen did you admit this semester? As against the following semester. So, alam nyo, may mga ano, na, these are things which are not under our control. No? What else? Uh, I have to say that it develops demoralization among employees. And I think this was also mentioned uh, in, in the uh, 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 report of uh, Dr. Albert. Talagang nangyayari po ito, kaya nagkakaroon din talaga ng pagbaba ng moral or dem uh, demotivation ng ating mga empleyado. It can also encourage free riders in the organization. Alam mo yun, yung... yung yung uh, mentality na hindi okay na yan kaya na natin yan pwede na yan no so ikaw hindi ka na lang gagawa ng ng part mo kasi meron namang iba na mga magagaling mag-perform okay mediocre or poor performers who persistently did not qualify may have reinforced their own culture of inferiority no kumbaga sabi nga sa psychology uh, nagkaroon na kayo nagdevelop na kayo ng learned helplessness uh, hindi naman tayo lagi number 1 eh Okay lang, palagi naman, hindi naman natin kaya silang tapatan. No? What else? PBB requirements became routine and bureaucratic. So, just parang sabihin natin, okay, just for the sake of doing it, sige, isasubmit na namin yan, bahala na. No? So, these are things na that runs counter no, to uh, the very objective of uh, PBB. What else? First ranking. Okay. malaking ano yan, usapin po, uh, among delivery units may have discouraged or demotivated units who did not qualify. Okay. Uh, and in fact, maraming mga tanong na, bakit sila best? Bakit tayo good lang? You know, th th those things. No? Ang daming mga tanong eh. And sometimes, it's, it, if not most of the time, ang hirap sagutin. No? The constantly changing PBB guidelines and documentary requirements are a source of challenge, confusion, and frustration. For us, faculty members and staff involved. Um, meron nga kaming ano eh, may in fact, halimba, uh, for this, this one, uh, I am invited to talk in this uh, webinar. Tapos, i -re report ko siya as part of uh, the, yung PBB ng, ng school. Now, they will ask me no, to submit this uh, satisfaction survey. So, sana kukukuha, no? Alam, manghihingi ako sa PIDS, manghihingi ako sa mga nag-attend. For example, I am uh, requested to uh, conduct a training sa isang um, uh, institution. Eh, ihingan ako ng satisfaction survey. So in the absence of satisfaction survey, uh, hindi makakount yung, yung ginawa, yung trabaho kong yun. No? Okay. 
So, ito yon. It's the same thing with this. Performance indicators for extension services, ito nga yung sinasabi ko, it still does not fully capture the actual outputs of the unit because the requirement to submit a client satisfaction survey dissuades as faculty members from reporting services that they have been requested to give. No? So, uh, pasensya na po, I can only share uh, based on our experience. No? And I'm sure baka yung iba mamaya during the open forum can also share their uh, experience. So, it puts the question to what extent has it really no, improved uh, service delivery in government offices? To what extent has it really improved productivity of government employees? No? Ito naman din talaga ang um, the very reason no, kung bakit tayo nagkakaroon ng PBB. Okay. So let's take a look at determinants of performance. Paano nga ba pinag uh, paano nga ba natin iintindihin ang performance ng mga empleyado, no? Bakit ang empleyado hindi nagpe-perform as expected? Ang tendency kasi uh, ay isisi sa empleyado, tamad ka kasi eh. Hindi ka kasi marunong, no? Pabanjing banjing ka kasi may ganun agad na uh, pag-iisip. But if you look at determinants of performance, no? Ang performance ng empleyado is influenced by the task characteristics, the goal, the physical environment, the work role, the social environment, the characteristics of organization. No? Ibig sabihin, ano ba yung trabaho ng empleyado? No? Uh, komplikado ba ito? Mahirap ba itong gawin? Okay. Uh, yung, yung work condition ba niya, ideal ba para magawa niya yung kanyang trabaho? Ang role ba niya is it, ano, baka naman overloaded na siya with work uh, or kaya malabo sa kanya yung kanyang role sa, sa, sa opisina at kumusta naman ang kanyang mga kasama sa opisina, kumusta naman ang kanyang boss. No? So uh, there are many things that come into play when it comes to performance no, of workers. Okay. In fact, if we look at this uh, determinants of employee satisfaction and dissatisfaction, Okay. Notice that pay, benefits, no? your bonus is just one aspect. Ang dami pa nating dapat uh, intindihin. Like for example dito, and it can be, itong listahan na nandito sa, na naka-identify sa left side, maaring mas marami pa dyan, no? Job security, balance of work life. No? Kung baga sabihin natin, malaki nga ang sweldo mo, hindi ka, na nga, hindi ka naman makauwi. Pero ngayon, work from home tayo, nasa bahay ka nga, pero ang, ang trabaho mo parang 24-7 ka na. No? 7-11 ka na ngayon. No? Safety in work environment, quality, working conditions, etc. Et so all those things no, can either lead to a satisfied employee or a dissatisfied employee. So kung meron kang satisfied employee, of course, ang ano natin, it will result to a committed uh, employee and engaged employee. Otherwise, tataas yung turnover, nandaan, nandyan yung absenteeism, yung tardiness, etc., etc. In fact, pwedeng magkaroon yung tinatawag na AIDS. What is AIDS? As if doing something. No? So, nandoon na yung, ano, na yung, yung empleyado sa opisina, pero in terms of output, meron ba? Wala. Yung pala, walang ginawa. No? Nag-Facebook lang maghapong. Okay. But then again, Hindi pwedeng isisi lahat ng ito sa empleyado. Ladies and gentlemen, we have to know what is the problem. Okay. So, if if you look at the uh, left side, no, the employee knows how to do it. Sa baba, the employee wants to do it. So, how are we going to diagnose? No? Ano ba ang problema? Very, very quick lang po ito. Uh, if the employee knows how but doesn't want to, there is a problem with motivation. And we know for a fact na ang motivation, dalawang klase yan. No? The PBB is just addressing yung motivation niya in terms of the what aspect. Ano ang nagbibigay ng, ano nakakapag-motivate sa mga empleyado? Or it is answering the needs aspect. Nawala doon yung isang uh, importante na aspeto, which is the content or the why aspect, the process. No? Pa, uh, binigyan mo siya ng pera, bakit, bakit, yun na, bakit yun nakakapag-motivate sa kanya? So we have to look at the needs versus the content, the what versus the why no? of a motivation. Next, if the employee knows how, at the same time, uh, he or she wants to do the, 
to, to do the work, pero hindi niya nagawa, then it becomes a problem of resource. And we know for a fact that in government institutions, in terms of access to resources, hindi po tayo pantay-pantay. Okay? And, and, and I think this was also uh, mentioned in the uh, paper na may, may problema because uh, to start with, hindi naman pare-pareho ang ating access sa resources. Eh. No? Okay. And yet, gusto natin lahat sila mag-perform. Okay. If the employee doesn't know how, at the same time doesn't want to, then there is job mismatch. The employee is in the wrong job. Okay? Pinag-uusapan natin dito performance, productivity. E paano naman? Paano natin hinar yung ating mga empleyado? No? Maaring ang kanyang knowledge, ang kanyang skills, hindi naman talaga match doon sa position na inuupuan niya. So kahit na bigyan mo yan ng isang milyon na, na bonus kada taon, Eh, ganun pa rin talaga ang magiging performance. Ganun pa rin talaga ang magiging output. Okay? And lastly, if the employee wants to, gusto niyang gawin ang isang trabaho, pero hindi niya alam, then there must be a problem sa training. No? Maaring kailangan natin siyang ipadala sa, sa training. No? So, ano ang kailangan natin gawin dito? Okay? Considering na itong napakarami nating uh, pinag-uusapan, isang uh, na kumbaga sabi natin napaka complex na pag-usapan yung performance no so what should we do okay we need to align the reward system with other organizational components or elements to ensure improved productivity and performance hindi pwedeng yung reward system natin ay nakahiwalay doon sa ibang components ng organization no so you have to look at the service culture okay uh, what are the products what are the services na binibigay natin sa ating mga uh, clients ano yung delivery system may, may ano mga training natin and if you look at this diagram this illustration yung motivators and rewards isang aspeto lang yan no and you also have to look at employees' roles and expectations. ano yung policies natin yung procedures yung sistema natin yung mga practices no? And of course, management support. Kasi hindi pwede na ihiwalay natin no? yung reward system natin sa, uh, sa iba. Na, kasi ang, 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 ang bonus natin, kahit, yun nga, nabanggit ko, kahit bigyan mo yan ng malaki, kung wala ka namang binago sa sistema, ang ating performance, ang productivity ng office or ng empleyado, it will still be the same no or kung meron mang pagbabago hindi magiging ganon ka significant no okay so maybe uh, what we we can do is uh, look at the 7s framework Pwedeng this one can be can serve as a guide no uh, you have there the structure the strategy and the systems ito yung mga um uh hard okay uh elements in an organization. So tingnan natin yung yung, yung organizational structure natin, no? Because ang organizational structure dito natin makikita ang work relationship, no, ng mga tao in that organization. What are the strategies? Ano yung systems? What are the practices? Ano bang ginagawa natin, no? And of course, um we also look at the shared values. Pare-pareho ba tayo ng uh, ng um ng aim, no? baka hindi naman talaga para par, kumbaga yung iba ibang gusto nilang gawin no there, there is something there, there is something wrong it's like nasa nasa isang boat ka pero yung iba nagro sa kabilang side no so you also have to look at your talent your staff ano bang staff na meron tayo ano bang skills na meron sila ano bang pwede nating itulong sa kanila and of course the leadership no so lahat ng yan no kailangan natin yan bigyan ng pansin no together with the reward system kasi kailangan yung reward system natin hindi sa pwedeng again ulitin ko hindi sa pwedeng kiwalay sa iba pa no kung hindi natin babaguhin itong mga nandito halimbawa na lang dito sa 7S framework wala pa ring ganon ka uh, significant na um uh, maaattain ang 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 isang uh, institution or ang empleyado okay Maraming maraming salamat po. That ends my presentation. At maraming salamat din po, Dr. George, uh, Dr. Ronalie Asuncion.
for your insightful um, comments. Indeed, it's very important that we look at the issues in a holistic way as what you have mentioned. Your motivators, your um, reward system is just one aspect of, um, of, of the entire system. And you also have to look at um, the other aspects. So we will have the chance to uh, entertain uh, questions regarding your, your presenta presentation during the open forum. So uh, now let's go to our uh, second uh, discussant. And our uh, second discussant is from the National Economic and Development Authority, or NEDA, where he has worked since 1991. He first joined NEDA as an economic development specialist. And over the years, he rose from the ranks and became assistant regional uh, director of NEDA Regional Office 3, then director uh, four of the financial planning and management staff, and later as assistant secretary of the corporate affairs group. Recently, he was reassigned to the regional development group, which oversees the NEDA regional offices, the regional development staff, and the agriculture, natural resource, and environment staff. He is a holder of Bachelor of Arts in Economics, Bachelor of Laws, and Master in Business Administration. And he also has a Master in Development Management degree, which he obtained under the Development Academy of the Philippines Public Management Development Program. Friends, Assistant Secretary Greg Pineda. Thank you, Gwen. Uh, good afternoon. Um, good afternoon to Dr. Albert and to Dr. Uh, Asuncion. So this is a reaction to the study presented uh, on process evaluation of PBB scheme. I have uh, uh, written my comments, uh, my reaction. Uh, now I will be reading my reaction. As a general note, the study captures well uh, PBB uh, as it is, uh, what it has been, and its beneficiary recipients feeling, opinion, and viewpoint about it. With the quality of analysis poured into the data gathered, the recommendations on how to make it a more useful incentive toward higher organizational performance, are anchored on solid grounds. The real causes behind the unintended consequences and the negative points on compliance, collaboration effects, and indicators and requirements, and even on perceptions in the main findings may or may not be directly linked to BBB, its mechanisms, and its processes. Eagle-eyed attention to the existing systems and procedures the organizational culture in the agency or the result of its processes interface with PBB implementation could add value to the policy recommendations and policy questions posed to the IATF. To be effective, this can be best left solely as an agency's strategic response. This may be viewed as a component and a complement to the proposed synchronization of PBB targets and agency-specific reform or capacity-building roadmaps, and also with the correct test. PBB and the nature of the SUCs is a potential concern. The overburdened SUCs call for a unique approach. They, they have a research mandate that they can exploit for this. On the other hand, the overworked public school, elementary, and high school teachers, and the extent of BEPS scarcity of accurate and or timely information on PBB can be tested through the multifocal approach and an open grievance mechanism it can set up. For instance, the basic concept of productivity or the differences determine what is unfair or fair. This has the capacity to, do, to denigrate, denigrate even the fairest of ranking among delivery units. Agencies should revisit their respective performance monitoring and evaluation systems against PBB design and objectives and figure out the dynamics between individual and institutional performance. This might give some insights too on the real individual contribution to the accomplishment of agency targets. The shifting of actual attribution to performance may help mitigate and manage the potentially unpleasant reaction like jealousy or ingitan in agency ranking. 
It might have been noted that with the elimination of forced ranking of individual personnel since 2016, the source of jealousy has shifted through the units and is still rooted in the perception in the inadequacy in the adequacy of individual performance. The inter-unit friction might serve as hurdle in building new teams for the organization. On undue competition among the employees, this is a correct qualifier and implicitly admits that competition or its alternative nomenclature is inherent in any organization with or without PBB. Whether or not PBB has made it unnecessary is a non sequitur. The MESO level recommendations in the revisiting of policy objective must first be defined at the agency level as regards its content, its responsibility centers, its approaches, among others, so that the PBB and its impact can be properly contextualized. On the rethinking of PBB design with policy questions posed to IATF, On number one, on juxtaposition versus broader state capacity building agenda, it may only be a matter of sequencing or the PBB experience can feed into shaping of a broader state agenda. One viewpoint is PBB has already started this process. But yes, I fully agree. This is or will eventually be the target scope of the IATF anyway. On number two, for agency level objectives, this must be complemented by robust, reliable, and credible performance assessment appraisal system. It needs to focus on individual staff or his or her relations dynamics with the organization. CSC may consider a different role in this respect. Support to weaker agencies for equity in compliance. In a different twist, a big brother, small brother concept. A distinction in time frame and sharing of experiences owing to timeline differential in systems productivity improvement, extended time, and higher tolerance in agency-specific evaluation. And yes, I agree, but from the point of view of the transacting public. Effectiveness of PBB, number four, given the SSL, etc. SSL is not an incentive for performance with targets, timeline, among others. So the question could be rephrased as, do government agencies need a performance-based incentive for higher productivity and performance and efficient and effective public service delivery. Lastly, my specific comments in the paper, why is CNA included among the outputs in the SUC cluster? First, and second and last, on the perceived arbitrariness of PBB payments, paasa asa one one. More than anything else, I think this very likely is a communication issue at the agency level. Thank you for sharing my reaction and good afternoon to everyone. And thank you to um, ASIC Red for your um, comments as well as your uh, res responses to uh, the uh, policy questions posed by the project team. Now, at this point, before we go to the op open forum, um, let us look at the results of our poll on the question, uh, should the government consider supporting weaker agencies to increase uh, their capacity to um, meet the PBB requirements? Let us look at the um, results. Gwen? Okay, the results are now being processed. Okay, so um, we have right now we have 276 uh, participants on WebEx. Uh, 90 did not answer our poll. A total of 186 uh, response, respondents answered our poll, wherein more um, uh, participants uh, think that the government should support um, the weaker, uh, weaker agencies. Okay. Thank you very much for participating in our um, poll. So as I've mentioned earlier, we will pick two names and I will reveal the uh, winners of our poll uh, before uh, the end of our web webinar. Hey friends, let us, know to the, uh, let us now go to the open forum. And aside from our discussants and Dr. Albert, the other members of the project team will also uh, uh, be present to answer your, your questions and also to give their comments. So we have Dean Ronald Mendoza, Dr. Gino Openiano, Ms. Jennifer Monham, Mr. Michael Pastor, and 
Dr. Janet Cuenca. Uh, may I request our uh, um, panelists to please enable your videos in case you're, you have good internet connectivity. Otherwise, uh, voice is, is okay. Now, friends, um, questions. Let me go to the to our chat box. It's okay. We have uh, a question here from Jose Marie Trinidad, and this is about the the uh, PBB guideline uh, five point three, which says personnel who transferred to an LGU from another government agency in Fiscal year 2019 shall be rated and ranked by the agency or LG where he or she served the longest. So, if the employee's length of service is his, her previous agency is no longer than that length of service in the current agency and his previous agency is not eligible to PBB, then he's asking if um, how how the PBB guideline 5.3 would apply. Can they still be eligible to BBB in the current agency or LGU. Um, I'm not sure if this this concerns the PBB guidelines. Uh, Toots, would you have any idea uh, or, or response to this? Or perhaps we can ask um, actually, uh, if we have, Yeah, if you have somebody from the AP, probably they can yeah, answer. Um, actually, VP um, Kaluen is uh, with us. Uh, he's She's supposed to, to um, give the closing remarks but uh perhaps she can already join us in the open forum uh ma'am vp imelda kaluen hello ma'am <laughs> yeah that's i think uh, a pbb guideline question yes ma'am uh, not really a question related to the uh findings of the study, but um, our program director is also in the in this uh, event. And uh, I would kindly ask uh, Ms. Ochi Ablan to respond to that uh, EBB guideline question. Thank you. It's okay, ma'am. Um, we will park this question for now. Yeah. And um, un until um, we have someone from uh, from the DAP, the person mentioned by uh, VP Kaluen. She's all, if she's around, we can um, uh, make her as a panelist. We can un unmute her mic so that she can answer this question. So for now, um, Jose Marie Trinidad, who uh, posed this question, ipapark po natin muna ito sa, sa ngayon. So let us now proceed to um, another uh, question. Okay, this is just a comment no, from uh, Maria Rosario Ablan. Um, what criteria ang pabago-bago ever since the PBB criteria has, has been? Uh, each agency must satisfy the following conditions to be eligible for the grant of PBB. Uh, good, good governance conditions, performance targets of agencies, performance rating system to be used for personnel in the first and second levels, and for career executive service positions. I think he's asking... Ano, ano ba yung sinasabing uh, criteria ng pabago ba, ang pabago-bago? Uh, did you see this? Um, meron, meron ba kayong information na nakuha from among the, uh, sa mga key informant interviews at saka sa mga FGDs nyo, Toots? Ano yung sinasabi nilang pabago-bagong criteria? The, the respondents, as far as I understand it, uh, didn't really specify the, it was more a general statement na, na okay. parang requirements across the years. Mm -hmm. But even the 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 technical secretariat had confirmed that. I mean, you know, there has been a, a list of requirements. Sometimes, you know, initially you you start tight tight. Uh, in fact, that was the whole point. They had uh, in, at the onset these were the things that they were requiring, and then uh, uh, at some years uh, because most were already uh consider it they, they were de facto already everybody was following it so tinanggal i mean something like that not really tinanggal but uh, by default you don't really need to to check on it and then they added more in certain years so i think that the whole idea was that and especially in recent years as i was suggesting 
uh, you, the 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 issue of the QMS, no, the uh, was probably one that struck many people, many institutions. Uh, they they had uh, in 2016 and 2017 when you uh, the it was required that every that pe that institutions would would have the the ISO QMS uh, certification. So uh, that was a bit uh, tough for for many institutions. Salamat, uh, Toots, no? So, okay, no questions yet from our um, participants. If I may ask this, no? Um, actually, this question is from me. So, uh, and uh, this is uh, in consideration of, of the pandemic uh, and the adjustments that everyone has is making to adapt to the normal. Do you think the government should relax the PBB requirements and now that we are in this um situation if not relax at, at least revisit the requirements and make some adjustments if necessary uh baka pwedeng maitanong ko ito kay uh, Dean Ronald Mendoza sir Hello can you hear me Yes we can hear you very well Yeah thank you I think some kind of uh, organizational adjustments are already in place across many organizations, public and private, as a response to COVID-19. Uh, even in our university in Ateneo, some of the protocols that we have have been relaxed uh, in order to adjust to the circumstances we have right now. So back to the question of the uh, colleague from government, uh, should, should some of the requirements be relaxed? Um, I do think this is going to be a strategic decision for government. Um, Obviously, you want uh, as high compliance as possible. Uh, mm -hmm. On the other hand, I think the reality for most government offices these days is that the adjustment alone to the present environment is already a big burden to our public sector. So maybe some kind of some kind of negotiated adjustment is is probably mm -hmm. prudent. Uh, but that is my view from the private sector side. Thank you very much. Um... Dean Mendoza, uh, for answering my, my question, that's something really that's, uh, you know, um, off the top of my head that now that we are in this pandemic and most especially yung sa, sa mga teachers natin, no? Sa Department of Education, so ang dami nilang mabibigat na kinakaharap ngayon given this uh, work from home. Um, having online classes, some of them are not even used to this. Uh, we have been hearing news. These are being documented sa the social media, sa mainstream media, at talagang mahirap, no? So, okay. Uh -huh. If I may ask, if I may um, get get some um, get the pulse of of the other members of the team with regard to that question, uh, perhaps. Uh, our friend, um, the team member who did a study on, uh, who, who concentrated on the depth and aspect of the study, si, si Ma'am si Ma um, uh, Ma Jennifer um, Monhe, any thoughts? Hi, good afternoon. Um, do you hear me? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Um, I fully subscribe to the thoughts of um, Dr. Uh, Dean Mendoza. Uh, it's up to the, it's, a, it's going to be a strategic uh, decision of government entities to um, um, modify somewhat or to, I'm not so sure whether relaxing would be a good word, but maybe we can find a way to still produce quality performance. Um, but Taking into consideration the fact that we are, uh, you know, in this unprecedented times. Um, if I may also, is it okay, ma'am, if I respond to the um, question a while back regarding Go ahead, the bago bago? Go ahead. <laughs> it's something that um, um, we had seen in the DepEd. Um, the weight of the key, uh, key performance indicators have actually changed over time. So, for example, in 2013, um, the mean percentage score devoted to um, national achievement test was a very high 40%. And in 2020, 
and then we've seen a um, gradual tapering to finally um, 20% in 2015. But there have been changes, you know, but per perhaps the reason why we said that there have been changes in the um, um, policies, I, this is one of those reasons why we saw that there are changes in the uh, policy. So the key performance indicators um, have changed over time. Thank you. Thank you very much, ma'am. Ma'am uh, Jennifer. Okay, let's go back to the question of uh, Jose Marie Trinidad and uh, uh, Director Ablan of uh, uh, the DAP is now uh, part of our panelist. Director Ablan, can you give us your thoughts, um, your, your response to the question of Jose Marie Trinidad? Hello, ma'am. Hello. Can you hear me? Hello. Yes, ma'am. Ayan. Okay. Kanina kasi hindi ako ma-unmute eh. Yun pong um, sa question kung if the... Wait lang ha. Can I just go back? Okay. I can read it for you, ma'am. Oh, sige po. If the employee's length of service is his pre her or her previous agency is longer than the length of service in the current agency and this previous agency is not eligible, uh, to PBB, applying the PBB guideline uh, 5.3, which states that personnel who transferred to an LGU from another government agency in fiscal year 2019 shall be rated and ranked by the agency or LGU where he or she served the longest. So can they still be eligible to the PBB in the current agency or LGU? Um, based po kasi sa guidelines, um, wherever you are the longest, doon ka po i -re rate So kung okay. longest ka doon, so talagang doon po yung performance nyo. Kasi if that uh, performance, your performance there, and then the agency there did not um, qualify, so paano ka mag qualify doon sa bago mong agency? Kung short lang po yung, yung contribution or parang contribution doon sa agency na yun. So, yun po eh. It's, it's where you are longest ser serving. Yun po yung nakalagay sa guideline. Pero Thank kapag kunyari yung both agencies are eligible, then mm -hmm. wala pong problema yun. But still, yung uh, performance rating nyo will be dun sa saan ka longest. Saan ka longest. Opo. Thank you po, uh, Ma'am uh, Rosario Ablan, Director Ablan, for the clarification. Now let us uh, go to the other questions. Uh, this one is from Maria Lourdes Dadal. May we request for the project team's opinion on the propriety of applying this, the criteria in granting the PBB with other incentives given to government employees like the, like the grant of the CNA or the collective negotiation agreement? Any thoughts? Um, perhaps I can ask the other um members of uh, the team uh doc si ano si uh, dr gino opiniano opiniano who uh focus on the nga aspect of the study ma'am gina ma'am gina can you hear me po hear me hi ma'am hello Yes, ma'am, we can hear you. Yes, ma'am. Um, can, you, can you read the question again? I cannot uh, find it okay. in the chat box. Um, Thank you. Okay. This, this is from Maria Lourdes de Dal. Um, may we request for the project team's opinion on the propriety of applying the criteria in granting the PBB with other incentives given to government employees like the grant of the collective negotiation agreement? Okay, thank you. Good afternoon to everyone. Um, I I am afraid I cannot speak for the team's opinion, but let me just check to what I think would be uh, consistent with the response of the NGA uh, and GOCC and C uh, um, yeah, and uh, the cluster I I I was in charge of. So um, the PDB uh, I see to be one of the one of the Benefits that a government employee receives. Uh, well, it's a it's a it's a bonus uh, incentive scheme, and uh, while well, some would believe that um, that there is sufficient um, you know in, um, incentives or 
or um, privileges enjoyed by government employees. The PDB is generally perceived as uh, yeah, well, a, a top up bonus na siya, no? So, nakikita na isa siyang, isa siyang parang something that, that partly motivates the employees, but at the same time, as I was mentioned, um, would uh, result to uh, unintended consequences. So, yeah, that's what I think. And in response, or in addition lang dun sa first question kanina, which was on um, the pabago-bagong criteria, let me also just echo what uh, the, the cluster I was in charge of think about it. It's particularly on the pabago-bagong forms, if I may say, na kailangan nila to fill out. So there were uh, common um, sentiments on, on having difficulty to fill out these forms. And while they have not mastered filling out the form yet, they were introduced for one year, they had to adjust and learn to uh, fill out another form, which is uh, given to them on another year. So I think also it's not necessarily criteria. I agree to uh, what Mom, uh, Maria Rosario said, but it's also uh, it also has uh, a peripheral impact on on the criteria. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much, Gina. Okay. Next question. This one is from. Uh... Well, um, okay. This one is from Facebook. Um... And perhaps um, our um, panelists from the DAP can answer this. And it pertains to the 5% attribution on God. Uh, is it one of, one of the requirements by you it's a PBB? Hello? I, I, I do not recall that uh, there is such a requirement mm -hmm. specific to God. Yes, ma'am. Thank you for the clarification. Um, Director Ablan, would you like to add? Yeah, Ito po. Ipapasama yung 5% attribution ano, on GAD? Wala pong requirement or wala pong part unless po in-enroll yun ng agency. Sa kanong mm -hmm. before, ah, nung MFOs pa po yung ating indicators. Unless in-enroll yun ng agency sa kanilang um, MFO indicators. Mm -mm 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 -mm. Yeah. Okay. Thank and may I just much. comment lang din po dun sa sinabi na forms. Mm -mm. Wala rin po kaming binago sa forms. So hindi uh -huh. po kami ma-identify ano yung sinasabi na nag-change ng forms. Lang form. Except lang po noong 2018 when nag-iba na po yung per physical target requirements which is already the streamlining that is just when the time that we had a change in the forms. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And also, okay. yun din pong nasabi na changing documentary requirements na isa submit. Mm -hmm. um, sa totoo lang po, ang pinapasubmit lang sa mga agencies is forms AA1, which is their physical accomplishments, form 1, which is their rating and ranking. And then they are required to submit the field GIFs explanation just in case hindi po nila na post dun sa field GIFs. So yun lang po yung mga forms or documentary mm -hmm. requirements talaga that we are asking agencies to submit. And yung sa SOCS po na sinasabi na voluminous data, uh, nire-require lang po kasi ni CHED na mag-submit ng mga SUCs ng additional documents just to I'll give them parang supporting documents that what they reported is correct. Or there's no really required documents na kailangan submit ng mga SUCs yun. Um, yun na po sinasabi ng CHEDE na parang as, even as in copies of the, the thesis sinasubmit ng mga SUCs, but these are not really required documents. Ang hinihingi lang po sa SUCs is um, supporting documents to support lang yung sinasubmit nila dun sa report. So, mm -hmm. yun lang pong uh, sinasabing voluminous documentary requirements, wala po talagang nakalagay na you have to submit a copy of this and that, yun. Tapos yung kanina rin po na sinabi na satisfaction survey, um, sa SUCs po, this is not a requirement kasi 2018, meron po yun for NGAs. But 
if it is included in your MFOs, dun sa nireport niyo sa DBM na mga indicators niyo, that for extension services that you need to report the satisfaction of your clients, then yun po, kasi that is included in your submitted to DBM. Yun po, yun lang po ang reaction ko dun. Thank you very much, Direc Director Ablan. Perhaps uh, Mr. Michael Pastor, who will focus on the SUC uh, aspect of the study, can expound on the feedback that uh, the project team got from uh, the FGDs and the KIIs uh, with the, the SUCs and CHED, no? Uh, Michael? Um, can everyone hear me? Yes, po. Okay, um, good afternoon. Um, sige po. Um, our response po doon sa comment um number one for SUCs um that um it's true naman that the chat um actually requires these supporting documents the the thing lang kasi I, I think uh what would appear is like based on the feedback that we have received right now there seems to be a communication problem because mm -hmm. as it appears some of the faculty members and even other staff are compelled to submit these requirements so kututuosin iba kasi yung understanding from an individual level from the employee to the agency one so dito dito kasi yung nangalabas na for the agencies ito yung nire-require pero sa employees who have to tell their performance, madaming documents na nire-require that sometimes some of the faculty members have expressed na ang dami na nga namin ginagawa, nag-research na kami, may extension pa kami, bibili pa kami ng documents and everything, ang daming minimeasure. So, nangyayari for some faculty members, some of them um, opt to not participate in the PBB anymore. May mga ganun talagang instances na ang ginagawa nila, we would focus on our other concerns. For example, our rankings, our um, research outputs, our patterns, because Mas may incentive kami doon, it is guaranteed for us to receive compared to the PDB. That sometimes, yun nga, it, uh, as mentioned, I would rectify na sa dami ng requirements, nagiging unfair siya. And it also reveals na um, in, in assigning these tasks related to PDB, unequal din siya. Because mm -hmm. there is uh, an expectation that for faculty members, kapag mas mataas yung rank, mas mataas yung expectations. But as it appears, hindi kasi siya yung nangyayari. And most of the tasks related to PBB are always um, delegated to junior faculty members. So ito yung mga uh, concerns that are, I think, related doon sa documentary requirements. So yun po siya. I think that's where the um, the understanding about the documentary requirements for SU is coming. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Uh, Michael Pastor. And now we have a um, a question or a clarification from Anthony Articolo regarding uh, the requirement on having ISO certification not to uh, to be PPB eligible. Well, as as uh, mentioned or as reported by uh, uh, the project team, no, it's it's part of the ISO certification is part of the PPB requirements, no. So, do I ISO certification of delivery unit influences its ranking within um, the agency? Well, yung ISO certification kasi that's for the entire ano eh, di ba? It's, it's for the entire organization. So, hindi naman siya ISO certification for delivery unit ng agency. It's for the entire uh, agency or the entire organization. Okay, uh, moving on, uh, we have other questions. Uh, uh, this one is from Ricardo Dizon. Uh, under the S SSL4, which covers 2016 to 2019, the incentive is equivalent to 2.5 of the basic salary. However, the current incentives given has a maximum of 0.6 percent of basic salary does any law repeal to the ssl4 this does, does any law repeal to the ssl4 uh supersedes the law um okay perhaps we can Okay, we can go back to that. Uh, so, most of the, most of our questions, friends, are um, are about the uh, PBB requirements, no? So, Director Ablan, uh, 
there, here's another um, question. Can we consider prorating the PBB of employees who serve two government offices in one fiscal year? I think you've already mentioned that uh, ang ito consider dito ay saan siya nag-serve the longest. Tama ba, ma'am? Yung, yung prorating po, that is just for those na government service. Parang if your, kunyari, uh, your uh, government service is le, ito, more than three months but less, uh, nine months, to, to, to parang more than three months but less than nine months. So, pinoprorate po yung, yung PBB ninyo. Pero yung tinatanong po kasi ata nila is yung transferring. Mm -hmm. So kung transfer, mag apply po. Actually may nag-post dito yung section 6.5 and 6.6 .6 na where you serve the longest, doon kayo i rank. Oo. Oh, 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 oh. mm -mm -mm. mm -mm. Thank you very much, Director Ablan. Um, another question, this one is from Tresna Pablo. Is there a move from the public sector to also extend the PBB and other incentives to non-plantilia positions for NGAs, SOCs, uh, GOCCs that employ non-plantilia workers because they, they too contribute to the performance of the agency, especially for those whose workforce consists of a large number of said workers? Director Ablan, uh, since you're from the A AO25 Secretariat, meron bang ganitong... Uh, pinag-uusapan within uh, um noon um, po po pinag-uusapan na po yun pero mm -hmm. um it's a DVM concern po eh kasi based po sa PBB guidelines um dapat uh, ano yan yung requirement na wait lang po I'll just state that the PBB coverage mm -hmm. To personnel holding regular contractual and casual positions as uh, uh, with uh, employee employee relationship and funded from the personal services budget, so PS budget ng agency. So you, mm -hmm. it's a it's a DBM ano po yan, hindi po ng AO25. Oh, okay. This is the DBM concern. Okay, but uh, sabi mo, uh, pinag-uusapan na yun within uh, DPM? Noon pa po yan na uh, pag-uusapan po because marami na nga pong nag-raise ng mga ganyang mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much, uh, Director Ablan. And if you have any participants from the DPM um, present in this webinar, we, we also welcome your feedback po. Okay, uh, moving on. Um, we have other questions. Uh, from Ronces and De Leon. Is this from Facebook? When? Ah, from Webex. Okay. How can we improve the PBB performance target setting negotiation process to level the playing field between the negotiators? That is GOCC and the GCG. Uh, hmm. Perhaps we can ask. Uh, Ronces and De Leon to um, um, expound uh, expound her her question and for accuracy of interpretation, ma'am. Okay, we would uh, be happy to unmute your mic, Paul. Okay. Uh huh. Okay. So we have other uh, comments here on the chat box regarding uh, clarification on. What they mean about changing the documentary requirements? Um, merong mga nasagot na po yan kanina ni ano ni uh, Director Ablan uh, nagpaliwanag na pag na pag uh, nagpaliwanag na po siya. But if I may read what Liz uh, Ross Perancolo wrote in the chat box, uh, okay. So he wrote that the, the doc documents um, required. Oh, and sabi niya. Um, these yung mga documents na yun are not actual required submissions and some SOOCs over submit documents that may not be required. Okay. Um, DBM? Okay. Director Gerald, um, yes, um, we received a question, sir. Uh, regarding po extending the PBB to uh, uh, non-plantilia um, staff po. So 
if I may read the question again from Tresna Pablo, uh, is there a move from the public sector to also extend the TBD and other incentives to non-plantilla positions? Be, um, considering that they also contribute to the performance of the agency, especially for those whose, whose workforce consists of a large number of said workers. Can we unmute the mic of Gerald? Director Gerald, you have already. Sir? Good, good afternoon. This is Gerald, ma'am. Yes, go ahead, sir. Uh, uh, to respond to the query, uh, actually yesterday, the DBM, uh, uh, the other day, uh, rather, October 20, 2020, the DBM issued a uh, commission on, on audit and DBM joint circular number two series of 2020. And may I read uh, item 7.5 of that? which states that the services of the contract of service workers, job orders are not covered by civil service law. So they, uh, they don't have employee-employer relationship. That's why uh, they are not receiving benefits similar to those that are already employing by different government regular agencies such as PPP, uh, bonuses. So uh, the non plantilla personnel such as the contract of service and job order are not covered by uh, the PBB, considering that the services they are rendering are not credited as government service and they do not have employer-employee relationship. This is the policy of the DBM together with COA ever since. Thank you, ma'am. No? Now let us go back to the question of um, uh, Dr. Uh, Ricardo Hison, no? um, he's he said he commented that yung SSL4, which covers 2016 to 2019, yung incentives kasi is already equivalent to one up to two of the basic salary. However, yung current incentives um, under the um, PBB, no, yung pinakamataas kasi yung best, ba? best performing unit is already 60% of the basic salary. So, ang tinatanong niya is, uh, meron bang... Meron bang law siguro na uh, may meron bang proposal to to repeal or to amend that uh, yung SSL4? I'm not sure if any of our uh, of our uh, uh, panelists would like to answer that uh, question. Pero Director Handa, since you're you're from the DBM, can you comment on this po? Ma'am, can I not get the question, ma'am? Okay, this one is from Ricardo Dizon. Sinasabi kasi niya yung SSL4, which covers 2016 to 2019, the incentives um, are equivalent to one up to two of the basic sal salary. However, yung current incentives kasi given ay already 60% of the basic salary, yung sa best performing unit. So meron bang... Uh, plano or any initiative to, let's say... Increase um, in the benefits? Oh, 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 Increase oh. the percentage? Uh, ma in, in, repeal, repeal ang ano kasi niya is repeal eh, or i-revise man lang yung SSL4? Yes. Actually, ma'am, I think the question, uh, the question came from our colleague and he is referring to EO 201 series of 2016 uh, where the PBB was uh, stipulated. I think ito yung sa um, portion uh, regarding sa amount of PBB. But so far, in the interagency task force, uh, there's no plan yet to increase the percentage of the amount of PBB that could be received by the best, better, and good. So we'll take note of the concern and uh, we'll elevate the matter to our principles. Thank you. Thank you once again, uh, Director Handa. Now let us hear the question of uh, direct of uh, Dr. Uh, uh, Vic Pakeo. He left already. Uh, okay. Sige, uh, baka he has a meeting, no? So we have other questions here. Um, Mm -hmm. Okay, um, we have a question from Thomas Testor. Um, are physical targets for this fiscal year 2020 as reflected in our agency performance measures have been set before the pandemic situation? May we have some, pro uh, but we have some problems in meeting our targets 
guidelines um, in some of the performance indicators under each program. If PBB guidelines will be strictly implemented, eligibility for the grant of PBB is for the 20 PBB is difficult. May we hear from AO25 Secretary of the Alternative uh, Plans on this? If uh, there is any, uh, yes, ma'am. Can we Ako go back ulit. to Director? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Go ahead um, po. Kung familiar naman po, if the agencies are familiar, if the, when agencies submit naman their accomplishment, if they are unable to meet their performance target, they provide explanations and justifications. And if it is beyond the control of the agency, it is being accepted by the the AO25 task force. So knowing na pandemic po yung reason why you are not able to meet your targets you just indicate in your reports and uh, i believe you are maybe you are from one of the SUCs ang alam ko po is CHED is already coordinating with the SUCs who are having problems in meeting their 2020 targets because we have received already some information from DBM regional offices already informing us that there have been discussions with the SUCs who are unable to meet so ganun lang naman po we we the agencies are um, encourage to include the reasons why they are unable to meet the targets. Sheila, you're not you're on mute. Thank you very much, Toots. Okay, so let's go to the next question, and this one is from. Uh, uh, Dr. Lewis Hawk of the World Bank, if, and if I may ask uh, Dean Ronald Mendoza to answer this, he would like to know if um, the project team has found any evidence that the PBB has a positive impact on organizational or individual performance, not just compliance with um, policies, and if so, what were the main reasons for the improvements or the de deterioration? Dean? Dean Mendoza, any thoughts? Yes, thanks. Thanks, Luis, for that question. I think the, um, the overall uh, study uh, showed that uh, there are there is evidence of uh, per performance improvement uh, at different levels, organizationally with the compliance with the requirements uh, to the extent that these are strategic objectives of government uh, so that more agencies end up complying with uh, many of the requirements. That has certainly uh, impacted some of the agencies very positively to the extent that they were complying uh, with the requirements, except we also found that um, many agencies did not. And there seemed to be some evidence that uh, they gave up on, on trying, uh, you know, being uh, considered for PBB. Uh, there were also, there's also evidence of uh, positive impact on teams at the department level so the the different groups tend to work together in order to uh, deliver on goals that uh, reflect positively on on this system except we also found evidence of gaming also mm -hmm. by groups <laughs> so there's always sort of a mirror that is not necessarily mm -hmm. the positive that we would like to see and then finally at the at the level of the individual we did also see uh, evidence of positive impact on individuals. They were trying their best to comply, except uh, yet again, there was a mirror of um, individuals who were discouraged. Uh, and, and I believe it was mentioned by Doc Toots and uh, some of my colleagues in the team that uh, there were some individuals who just basically gave up on trying to be part of PBB because there are other incentives that are more powerful, um, perhaps financially. Uh, and uh, they also saw the compliance requirements is a little bit onerous. So they, they thought of the work uh, benefit the balance, I guess, or trade-off. Uh, and they, I guess, did the calculus and said, uh, yeah, I'm better off not actually uh, wasting my time with the requirements. So I guess the overall impact is at the different levels, there is evidence of positive impact. On the other hand, there are also evidence of improvements necessary. So that's mm -hmm. where Doc Toots and the team really focused uh, the recommendations on how to improve uh, on the system because it's mm -hmm. it's showing some good impact, except it's not all around uh, positive. Okay, thank you very much, Dean Mendoza. 
uh -huh, another question here but this time uh okay our uh director ablan this is again for you no maraming questions po regarding the the um regarding the PBB requirements, even the validation of the elig eligibility of the agencies. Um, we have here from the PPP Center, si Catalina Caraan, Director Ablan, sabi niya, may we suggest to fast check the validation of the eligibility of the agencies? We often receive comments that PBB is requiring streamlining of processes, but the AO25 IATF review and validation, validation processes take, take so long. Maybe this, that is what paasa means director ablan yes but right now po, we're in the process of validating the 2019 pbb actually mm -hmm. as as may meron pong forum dito there's an ongoing composite team review so uh -huh. uh, <laughs> we're trying really to fast track despite the situation na online po yung ginagawa ng validation ng composite team mm -hmm. and for 2019 we would uh we are trying that those who are eligible will be Ma finalize yung process ng review tong 2020. Salamat po, uh, Director Ablan, and thank you also to uh, the efforts of the um, IO AO25 um, Secretariat. Okay, uh, question from Dr. Francis Kimba of PIDS. Uh, what's the benefits cost ratio of the PDD? And is giving out this incentive worth the benefits? Toots, would you like to answer this? Uh, you know, I mean, so far as Ron was suggesting, there are really uh, a number of good things happening. Uh, mm -hmm. and, and this is why I think uh, somewhere in the chat box, somebody was asking, so are you suggest, what are you suggesting? Should, should PBB be continued? I mean, the, the overall feedback has still been fairly positive, I would say, except that, as suggested by Ron, there is... There are weeds among the wheat, no? Uh, so you, they're they're always together, the wheat, the wheat and the weeds. So it's it's kind of hard to disentangle the weeds, and and sometimes it's it's kind of unfair. Also, I mean, I remember even years ago uh, when I was doing some work not on PBB but uh, to, with D DSWD, and we were doing field work, and many of the things that I was hearing from DSWD staff, very hardworking staff at DSWD, I say. They're really, really so productive, but some of them are MOA, uh, contract of service. But they have so much psychic pain that they say, kami, nagtatrabaho kami ng todo, but we don't feel appreciated dahil yung PBB, ni, man, ni, ni Cinco man lang, wala kaming nakukuha dyan. Ang nakakakuha yung, per, yung permanent staff, yung employees, because they are they're permanent and ginagawang justification, yung mga programa namin, pero... Kami na nagtatrabaho rin naman, tumutulong kami to contribute to productivity and to, to doing good service, hindi naman kami nababalue. But on the other hand, as was pointed out by, by the DBM, the government's hands are also tied because legally, they're, they're unable to help all the contract of service because wala naman, hindi, wala nga personality, unfortunately. You know? So much as government would like to do this, they're they're kind of the the rules of the game are also sort of tying them somehow so it's not easy i mean right now what we do know is that there is some good coming out of it but at uh, at, at various level organizational as pointed out by ron and at the team level within the organization and at the individual level but as was suggested by by uh dean george earlier that unfortunately, you know, sometimes nakakaawa rin because sometimes some people deserve to get some kind of bonus, some productivity bonus. But because uh, there are issues, because to some extent, uh, maybe even if they want to do better, but they may not be capable, so it might be uh, an issue. And then it, it may be in an agency, katulad nga lang sa pagkakasabi kanina, na they may, they may be in a souk, uh, uh, they're very productive, they will resort to other incentives, pero yung productivity bonus, because they are productive, hindi nila nakukuha dahil ang daming documentary, pero for them, it's not it's not worth it. But uh, to, to that extent, I think we, we, em we empathize with everybody here, from the, the people who are, who are doing the very good work in government, including the DBM and the AO Secretariat and the IATF. 
they're doing all their work. Sa ngayon, parang ano, nakita nga namin yung when we actually saw at, at, at DAP, the various documents that they have to go through, nakakaawa, madaling sabihin na bilisan yung trabaho niya, pero actually, I mean, in fairness to to DAP and DBM, if you go to their offices, they're doing so much work din yan, ano? And I, I empathize a lot with them because I think they 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 need to also, we need to understand where they're coming from too because even if they, I mean, there is a lot that needs to be done to improve, but you also need to see that there are all of these things uh, in uh, that, that are inter that are time, <laughs> you know, to intertwined. <laughs> so it's not easy to make all the changes immediately. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Albert. If I may um, um, call um, Dr. George, no? Uh, Dr. George, kasi kanina sa iyong comments, you mentioned about non-monetary incentives, no? Because this PBB is obviously a, um, a monetary one, a financial one. But you were saying that um, hindi, naman, hindi naman dapat lagi or monetary, you know? There, there could be other non-monetary incentives that are worth um, considering uh, by government in order to um, enhance or in, in order to uh, um, instill that uh, that uh, yung, yung productivity that uh, permits of the public sector workforce. Uh, any, would you like to expound on this, ma'am? And can you give us examples of that? those non-monetary incentives. Okay. So usually, off the top of our heads, sabihin natin yung mga awards. Yeah. But people will ask, but kailangan namin, mas kailangan namin ngayon ang ano eh, ang, ang pera eh. Yeah. Uh, uh, the uh, dire situation that we are in. So how how can we balance yung pag, pagbibigay ng non-monetary at saka monetary incentives? Yeah. Uh, of there course. Right mix? Yeah. Um, wala naman talagang, ano, kumbaga, one size fits all. Na Naririnig ako? Yes, ma'am. Ah, uh, Okay. Sige, Very sige. Well okay. Um, ang may may yung reward system kasi uh syempre para sa ating mga Pinoy siguro it is also a reflection of uh you know yung something na wala tayo which is yun nga yung pera. Sabi natin maliit ang sweldo and all. So ang una talaga po ang pasok sa isip natin when it comes to rewarding employees is pera, no? Which is uh, kasi naman yun kailangan natin lahat talo na nga ngayon no but but there are uh, sabi nga natin merong intrinsic and extrinsic re ano uh, uh, ways of rewarding employees nabanggit ko nga kanina yung uh, yung yung working condition itself no yung uh, pa paano ka mamomotivate kung kung wala ka namang access to wifi paano ka magwo-work from home i mean uh, these are uh, basic things na nabanggit niya sa study yung kay Abraham Maslow di ba that, that is the first level no yung mga bagay na yan paano ka makakaakyat sa susunod pang levels no paano ka mamomotivate kung yung basic mo na mga requirements eh hindi mo nga namimit so uh, th these things and um, um meron lang akong gustong sabihin tungkol doon sa mga <laughs> sa mga contractual employees natin so we, we have to um, alam niyo po kasi sa government ang dami nating contractuals na Hanggang sa nag-retire na lang po sila, contractual. Uh, I, I don't know if it is feasible. I understand walang employer-employer uh, relationship no? sa mga job orders. And, and in fact, may mga job orders ka makakausap. Sasabihin nila na yung dirty jobs kami, yung mga ano kasi sila yung mga na, na, na permanent, inuutos lang sa amin. Pero kami talagang gumagawa na wala naman daw silang magawa. No? So um, I think uh, maybe uh, it is also a uh, high time to revisit ano ba talaga yung ano natin talaga bang maano lang tayo doon sa sa legal ano na uh, walang employer employee relationship kasi siguro bigyan din natin ng guidelines like for example if you have been in that uh, uh, institution government institution say for 5 years mm -hmm. tapos contractual ka pa rin job order pa rin there is something wrong ibig sabihin Yung trabaho mo yan is already uh, important, significant. Hindi ka na pwedeng, ano, kumbaga, ikaw, contractual mo lang naman, i job order mo lang, ba Parang, it is supposed to be temporary. Diba? Na, kasi mangyangailangan kayo ng workforce. Addition. Pero kung contractual ka na for, for, for a very long time, eh, eh dapat i-permanent mo na itong mga empleyadong ito. I, I don't know. I, maybe, and, 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 uh, 
coming from a school of labor, ay, alam mo yun, parang uh, sa totoo lang, ay, ay, we have to to be honest. It, it is also um, unfair sa, sa kanila. No? And um, uh, in, in fact, isa yan sa ano, yung kanina sa presentation ko na I don't know kung nabanggit ko lang na papano uh, yun nga yung kasi sa sa study na sabi na may mga may ingitan no um, kasi nga meron kang mga job order mga contractuals na mga uh, uh, government uh, uh, employees or workers <laughs> kung ano man no na hindi naman nila natatama sa itong itong TBB na ito and if you come to think of it di ba merong tiyataw yung equity theory no so kung nakikita nila yun kami ang gumagawa pero iba naman yung nagtatamasa ng kanilang trabaho so eh, talagang totoo naman na nagbibigay din ito ng ng ganyan na pakiramdam you know the, the, psych, the psychic no na ano na parang sila lang naman ang meron eh kami kumbaga uh, sila they are in a position na kailangan nilang magtrabaho kasi wala silang choice no Y- y- yung ganon otherwise what mawawalan sila ng work no kaya yun po yung mga um, mga issues mga concerns no na lumalabas pagdating sa PBB which i think dapat din talaga pong i- i- revisit kasi i mean if you have ano um, contractual na 10 years na ha contractual ka pa rin hello kung sa nasa private tayo aba unfair labor practice na tayo <laughs> <laughs> I, I mean, di ba? So, uh, yun lang po yung ano. And I, I, I think um, i, if if ang ang pag sinabi natin balancing the intrinsic and extrinsic reward, uh, iba-ibang context kasi yan kada organization. Meron tayong kanya-kanya ring kultura. At the same time, um, oh, na, ang problema rin kasi natin sa government, wala talaga tayong ganun ka flexibi- na yung flexibility no as opposed sa private sector kasi sa private sector po um, may mga companies na meron silang tinatawag na cafeteria style no ng benefits ano ang cafeteria style na to meron kang menu like for example um, if they can uh, say if they have 10 benefits na pwedeng nilang i-offer sa kanilang mga empleyado yung empleyado pwedeng mamili ng anim na sa palagay niya ay makakatulong sa kanya okay case in point okay Sa amin, sa UP, uh, kapag ka, um, gusto mong, if you are a regular employee at gusto mong mag-aral sa UP, nakapasok ka, ganyan, wala kang babayaran na tuition. Okay. Ganon din sa iyong mga, um, ano tayo ito, yung sa mga dependents, like yung sa mga anak. Okay. So, ngayon, sabihin natin, mutan academic na yan kasi libre na ang tuition sa, sa mga uh, gov- SUCs. Pero noong mga panahon na hindi pa libre yan, merong mga ano, may mga uh, issues na lumalabas na paano naman kami? Uh, kasalanan ba namin na dalaga kami pero nagpapaaral ako ng pamangking ko <laughs> at nagbabayad ako ng buo kasi nga under the law, dependent mo lang talaga ang pwedeng uh, maka-enjoy uh, ng ganong benefit. Uh, kaya lang, yun nga, uh, wala tayong ganun na flexibility, itong nakalagay. So, yun lang talaga, kumbaga, nakatali nga, yun nga kaninang sabi ni Dr. Albert, our hands are tied, no? So, um, also, uh, remember na ang, ang, ang work life ng isang empleyado, pagdating sa kanyang needs, nagbabago yan, no? Through time. Maaaring sa, ano, kapag bagong empleyado ka, ang una mo talagang titingnan is, kailangan malaki ang sweldo ko. No? But, you know, um, uh, uh, as time goes on, para iba na yung ano mo, iba na yung kailangan mo. Uh, maaring gusto mo na ng mas malaking health coverage. Kasi yun ang mas magagamit mo. Yun nga yung, ano, yun yung idea behind the cafeteria style. So, um, I don't know kung, kasi masalimuot din sa, sa government, kasi ang dami namin pong, ano, ang dami namin pong, mga uh, COA rules, civil service na dapat namin i-take into consideration yung DBM. And so, yun po yung <laughs> malaking yung challenge po. And ang ganda po ng ano ng PBB, mm-hmm. no? Ang ang ganda ng ano the, the, the concept, the idea behind PBB, mm-hmm. you reward doon yeah. sa mga uh, uh, institutions who are really performing, but uh, we also have to look at it from a 
ano view na talagang mas malawak pa no kasi um, maraming kami na nabanggit yung ano paulit-ulit yung unintended consequences at yun ang dapat natin ding uh, bigyan ng pansin yung mga unintended consequences walang nagsasabi I would like to believe na hindi maganda ang PBB maganda yung intention ng PBB wala kaya lang uh, we are here to discuss ano ang pwede pa natin magawa para lalo siyang maging maayos I think ito lang naman yung bottom line dito sa discussion natin. Yeah. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. George. Sana ma-harmonize yung mga requirements ng mga iba-ibang agencies. Kasi like yung sa GAD, sa COA yun eh. It falls under COA, though, which is not uh, part of the requirements naman of the EBB, no? Anyway, that's uh, for another uh, webinar, no? We still have uh, several questions in our chat box. So, friends... Um, Okay, this one is from um, Executive Director uh, Merwin Salazar, and he's asking if the study has assessed uh, if the PBB is achieving its purpose. Did it measure PBB's impact on productivity in government? As a whole, how much did PBB contribute to increasing productivity in government? Uh, as mentioned by Dr. Albert, uh, meron pong impact evaluation study, which is for 2020, na ginawa ang PIDS, and it it will be uh, it, the results are are the initial results are ready and and um, hopefully next year po ma ma present po natin ito sa isang um, sa isang uh, public webinar na katulad nito. Toots, um, any uh, brief um, response to to that question? Baka may gusto kong idagdag about that uh, EBB impact evaluation na ginagawa ng ng team yon. Oh, yeah, uh, as uh, as I sort of suggested earlier to respond to Merwin, uh, that the, the uh, you know the it's still ongoing. There will be some initial uh, uh, results that we will be presenting only within first PIDS and mm -hmm. our stakeholders, mm -hmm. but it, we will be presenting it publicly at some point. But of course, recognizing that there will be a lot of challenges in quote, measuring the impact because as, as, I, as we were already saying, government agencies are so varied, you know, their outputs are so varied. So trying to say that productivity changed this much, you know, uh, is a... Uh, is, uh, it's a PBB challenge, you know. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, it, it really, it, it's it. There will be a lot of heroic assumptions to do that, and mm -hmm. even when we were designing the a survey to to try to get some self-reported uh, uh, impact on their on people's productivity, unfortunately, mm -hmm. ng, ng, ng pandemia, no, and so mm -hmm. this it has also affected even the way we are collecting the data from from people you know so that's why mm -hmm. well, i i i myself have uh, a little bit of reservations about the the full the full mm -hmm. presentations that we will be doing but uh we will we will nonetheless do this uh, uh at least initially in house thank you very much uh, we look forward to that uh, to the results of the impact evaluation study and we can have um, another uh, webinar on that next year Okay, uh, from Julius Dumangas, um, is it possible for the study team to clarify the theory of change um, for PBB, at least in terms of the measurable performance indicators and the measurable effects of the PBB? Overall, has the PBB improved the effectiveness of performance informed uh, budgeting? Uh, can you, can you, uh, can we hear from the other members of the team? Uh, kung sinong gusto mo sumagot ito? Can you uh, um, refresh our memories on the theory of change for the BBB? Sino pa ba ang hindi nakakapag, uh, ano? Dr. Cuenca, would you like to respond to this? Hi, good afternoon. Can mm -hmm. you hear me? Yes po, you can uh, hear you. I actually answered uh, Sir Julius' mm -hmm. question. But for, Yes, uh, because, Janet, yeah. but, but for the for the uh, benefit of, of the others, can you uh, tell us about it? Well, actually, we're still doing the, the study and we're still studying the TOC for the PBB scheme. So hopefully next year we'll be able to, to present that in a webinar. Okay, thank you very much, Janet. Thank you. Uh, Okay, other questions? Uh, well, this is just a comment from Andre Stanislaw. Um, 
sabi niya, we thank the DBM for finally approving the release of the DFAs PBB 2018 after much back and forth. And he has a question, is there a way to ensure that there is an actual timeline on the release of the PBB after the task force has deemed a government unit eligible? This process perhaps can also form part of the streamlining process of the task force itself. Uh, Director Ablan, any thoughts on this? Uh, pwede bang may, ano, may actual timeline ng release ng PBB? Actually, meron po kong seen... timeline na... Hello? Uh -huh. Yeah. Actually, uh, we have this timeline that we are following dun sa guidelines. Mm -hmm. um, yun nga, for the 2019 PBB, we are now in the process of reviewing it. And uh, once na, na finalized, kasi like, meron pong mga individual agency review ng mga streamlining nila. So, si DBM naman po, once clear, and then um, the problem sometimes kasi it's the rating and ranking eh, na hindi nagmamatch yung sa budget ng agency. So, mm -hmm. um, we really want to release all by 2020, last like ng 2019. Okay. Thank you very much, Director Ablan. We're down to our last uh, three uh, questions. Uh, this one is just an... A suggestion of uh, uh, doc, of uh, Ricardo Dizon about giving non-monetary incentives such as automatic merit increase and step increment if vertical promotion is not possible. Okay. Um, okay. Perhaps. Um, how will this one from Chanel Rabe? How will the PBB be affected for transferred personnel from NGAs to LGUs as a result of the Mandanas ruling? Are there plans to conduct a study focusing on PBB in LGUs? Uh, Director Ablan? Because uh, the LGUs are, can also get the PBB, okay? Yeah, meron pong PBB ang LGUs. They have their own yes. guidelines. Um, I just not don't have the guidelines right now, so I cannot answer your question. But then later, ko na lang po. Pag nakita ko na yung sure. guidelines. No problem, uh, Director Ablan. Okay. Um, from Thomas Testor, um, sabi niya, I, na raised na niya yung, yung suggestion na ito during the PBB orientation, and he would like to take this opportunity to raise it once again. The PBB incentive should not be salary based, but should be across the board. If the office or delivery unit is classified as best delivery unit, officials and staff of that unit will receive equal amount of PBB since it's a one time incentive every fiscal year. Any comment from AO25 Secretariat? Director Ablan? Mom, our scheme now is like that. If your uh, delivery unit is classified as best, Everyone yes. within the unit. Diba 60 percent of the basic salary, and oh. ma'am, 60. Opo, opo. Oh, oh. Mm -mm. Perhaps uh, he was referring to the earlier uh, guidelines, but uh, starting ano ba 2018 ba yun, uh, Director Ablan? So you have already. Um, 2015 pa po ata. 2015. Okay, okay. Thank you very much, Paul. Um. Okay, so this will be our just a comment from DC um, Sarmiento, sa isang FB viewer. Perhaps the rule including the BUR as one of the ter determinants in the grant of the PBB should be reviewed. Um, well, yung sa BUR, this is under GAS, no? Director Ablan? Yes, ma'am. Uh -oh. Budget utilization uh -oh. rate is a GAS. Yes, uh -oh. Uh, sa gas it, uh, under gas ito. So, sabi niya baka daw pwedeng ma-ano rin, ma-revisit ma din nung, nung uh, AO25 IATF. Kasi baka isa, isa rin sa nahihirapan yung ating mga agencies ano, to meet the BUR. Hmm. Yung budget utilization rate po, um, if hindi po nila nami-meet, again, they just need to provide um, explanation why. And if it's beyond the control of the agency, like for example, it was savings generated, kaya hindi na nagasto, so it's been considered naman po. Mm -hmm. Okay, friends, uh, we have had a uh, long uh, open 
we have had a long discussion uh, and uh, we have accommodated so many questions. So at this point, if I may ask uh, some of the members of the project team for, for some final remarks. Uh, Dean Ronald Mendoza, would you like to say um, something uh, to our audience before we close the open forum? Yes, thank you, Sheila. I, I just want to join uh, Doc Toots Albert in thanking all the task force uh, personnel and its leadership and all our colleagues in government for supporting this study, for being very open to us uh, looking at the effectiveness uh, of this particular reform. Mm -hmm. uh, and it shows uh, the candor uh, in terms of what was good and what was bad. Uh, and, and this kind of exercise, I think, is very, very important. And uh, I'm very happy to see that our government colleagues are very open to sharing, uh, whether it's good or whether it's bad, how, how effective the reform is really working. And so uh, I also joined Dr. Albert in emphasizing that we need to manage expectations as far as what we are going to be able to measure. Uh, I know that uh, many of our uh, economic colleagues are interested in the actual um, benefit benefit cost uh, sort of calculus of what these incentives actually help produce for us in terms of productivity. But I do think that the exercise itself of evaluating uh, this particular reform, PBB, is important and, and we should go through it. So uh, thank you to all our government uh, colleagues. Okay, thank you very much, uh, Dr. Mendoza. So if I may also get uh, a few words from um, ASEC uh, Greg Pineda, sir, of the NEDA. ASEC Pineda, are you still there? Hello, sir. ASEC Pineda? Hi, yeah. I... Yeah, th uh, th thank you, Sheila. As uh, I mentioned in my uh, reaction, uh, it's the directions are going well, uh, going the right way, and uh, it's only a matter of time where we can really um, uh, make uh, improvement uh, in areas identified uh, in the study, and we can all make uh, performance-based bonus, uh, you know, a real, uh, real agent of change, uh, mm -hmm. some life, a life-changing um, reform, uh, a bonus incentive. Uh, or a uh, high level performance uh, of uh, all government agencies and the entire bureaucracy as well. Mm -hmm. Thank you. For, thank you very uh, much, uh, sir. And um, thank you for uh, joining us uh, this afternoon. And, it's, a, it's a pleasure. It's a pleasure. And I, I learned a lot too. Thank you. Salamat po, sir. Okay. Friends, um, at this point, uh, please join me in, in thanking all our. Uh, our speakers for the insights that they have shared in our webinar this afternoon. Let's give them a big virtual clap. And thank you also to those who participated in our Q&A. So at this point, I would like to announce the two vendors of, of our poll for this webinar. They are Jasmine Tolentino and Jan Rafael Delantar. I repeat, Jasmine Tolentino and Jan Ra Rafael Delantar. So each of you will receive um, a copy of the PIDS PI notebook plus uh, five guaranteed slots to our webinar, to our next webinar, which will be on November 12, and our team will get in touch with you for your mailing address. At this point, I now call on our closing speaker, who is the Vice President and Managing Director of the Center for Gov Governance, the, De uh, the Development Academy of the Philippines Technical Excellence and Resource Center, on political and, and administrative governance. In addition to her management role, she is also involved in the delivery of capacity or capability development, research and knowledge management initiatives to advance public sector productivity principles and practices in the region through the Asian Productivity Organization Center of Excellence on Public Sector Productivity, and also in the implementation of the harmonization of the national government performance monitoring information and reporting systems. She contributed in the conceptualization of the re results-based performance management system framework, the formalization of guidelines related to the implementation of the R RBPMS and uh, the performance-based incentive scheme and other key activities. 
Our closing speaker has a master's degree in development planning from the University of Queensland and a bachelor's degree in political science from the University of Santo Tomas, Manila. Friends, Ms. Imelda Kaluwe, ma'am. Hi, thank you, Sheila, for the very kind introduction. But uh, let me start by saying in behalf of the AO25 Technical Working Group, uh, we'd like to congratulate uh, PIDS for a very well attended uh, webinar. Um, and as always, the topic of performance based bonus attracts a lot of uh, attention and participation. And hearing the, the high level officials who are attending at the moment, and uh, including the personnel from the various agencies. Um, uh, we wish to congratulate PIDS. Um, to um, Dr. Celia Reyes um, and the PIDS research team, uh, we'd like to thank you for inviting us to deliver this closing. And uh, also to the members of the technical working group who helped uh, respond to a lot of questions. We, we didn't actually expect PBB guidelines related questions, but um, we're happy that uh, we're able to respond even um, through this forum because, yeah, I'm not sure if I, I am uh, allowed to respond to it <laughs> because I am uh, supposed to give the, the closing remarks. But anyway, I, I, we know that uh, the PEDS research team put a lot of work um doing the study and uh this is actually not the first time that we're hearing the highlights of the 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 study because uh this has been a very engaging process from the time it was conceived uh to scope uh and properly uh frame the question so that uh in the interest of knowing how we are doing in terms of the process that's why uh, initially, the first part focused on uh, the process evaluation, and we appreciate hearing the results uh, today. Uh, so, we really look forward to uh, the presentation of the uh, next part, which is the more essential part, because this will be an impact evaluation. And uh, as always, uh, we look forward to um, knowing the feedback. And um, I must say that uh, from the start, ever since we started this initiative in 2012, it was clear to us that uh, this is not a perfect system. Uh, we try to improve as we implement. Otherwise, if we try to perfect it the first time, we may not have been able to implement uh, anything at all. So we are one in uh, facing all the, the challenges. And at the same time, um, we are also striving our best. You know, uh, all of the members of the AO25 uh, always consider the, the feedback and the I think the one word that we encountered a lot today was the pabago bago. And I would like to say that, that that was a function or a consequence of the feedback that we are getting in the process. Uh, we try to flex at certain times when we see that agencies would need uh, time to adapt. Yes, we, we, we change some requirements because we do recognize that when they are able to adapt, it's time to introduce tighter uh, requirements. But um, we are all one in uh, the objective of introducing this effort to make sure that we contribute to the promotion of um, increased accountability uh, focus on results that matter to the citizens and and finally uh, to develop a culture of uh, excellence in the public se sector 
So I I think um, for the past eight years, uh, the the RBPMS and the PBB system that we have has evolved a lot, and um, we are also coping and uh, trying to meet uh, the ever changing or the evolving uh, priorities and directions of uh the administration so every now and then uh it is a given that uh we have to uh, align you know, align with the directive so that we can push the agencies to uh try to comply and meet the priorities of uh the administration so we are really looking forward to uh the second part of the study uh and uh we hope that um, again uh, we will have this forum where we don't hear not only the results, but uh, we hear also feedback from uh, the agencies who are covered by this um, reform initiative. So, with that, uh, I would like to thank everyone. And uh, for the before I forget, those agencies who agreed to be part of the respondents. Uh, I'm sure uh, we, we have participants from these agencies. Uh, we, we really uh, appreciate their uh, cooperation uh, that they have extended to the PIDS research team. So good afternoon, everyone, and uh, we hope for your continued support to the AO25 uh, technical working group and the task force. Thank you. Thank you very much, VP uh, Kaluen. Uh, we are uh, also honored to have you in our uh, webinar. And so, friends, before we finally close, um, here are some uh, reminders. Okay, so some of you are asking about the uh, copies of our presentations today. We will, you can download them from our, um, our website, uh, our events page. And at the same time, we will also post it on our, we will also post the link on our Facebook page. And then um, a while back, uh, Dr. Ronali Asuncion was uh, mentioned about the, the feedback form. We, every webinar, we have the feedback survey and um, it will pop on your screen after, the, after this webinar. But in case you missed it, we will send you the link. Um, we will send a link to your email accounts and uh dr ronnelly we can we can uh, share with you the results of Thank our you. feedback <laughs> survey book <laughs> don't worry about it okay and friends uh please um uh, always visit our um, uh, website pids.gov.ph it contains um copies of all all our knowledge resources as well as um schedule of uh, pids events and um, updates about our uh, research uh, projects and our activities of, of uh, the Institute. Of, and we also have our um, social media accounts. Thanks once again to all who, who, are, um, who regularly watch our um, webinars uh, on our Facebook page. And we also have a Twitter, a Twitter account where we um, tweet uh, the highlights of our webinars. And for our next webinars, um, please remember that this is our last webinar for October, and the next one will be in November. That's on November 12. We will have our the PIDS study on assessing the readiness of Filipino professionals to participate in the mobility of skilled labor in ASEAN. Uh, the presenter uh, for this webinar is Dr. Teresa Tuliao, who is one of the um, authors of that study, Dr. Tuliao. As most of you know, is uh, uh, working at the De La Salle uh, University, and on November 26, we will have our webinar on understanding the role of the Asia Pacific Economic Cooperation, or APEC, in Philippine trade and investment. And our resource speaker, resource person for this webinar is Dr. Francis Kimba of the PIDS. And finally, we would like to thank all the. Um, representatives from government, from academe, from the business sector, civil society, and even the media for um, um, attending, for supporting this webinar. You can see those their names, the names of those agencies on the screen, and we will 
um, keep those slides uh, running until the end of the webinar. So friends, um, this concludes our webinar for today. I see you again on November 12th. Always stay safe and healthy and stay informed too. Thank you once again to our uh, speakers, to our discussants, and of course to all of you for joining us today. Maraming salamat po and enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you, Sheila, and thank you to PIDS. Congratulations to the study team. Thank you, everyone. Thank, thank you, everyone. Doc. Yeah, thank you, Doc. Thank you, Sheila. Congrats thank and thanks, uh, Sadi team. Thanks, Salamat Super Media. Salamat. Thank you, Paul. Thank you. Thank you, everyone.